we've kind of finished drilling now until the potatoes are dug out of the way. So we're going to unhitch the drill, put it on Joe's New Holland. Joe's going to go and do a load of him and Bill's drilling with this drill. In fact, we, we and Richard got a video last night of Sam coming home with a drill from Lynn. So here it is. Lots of people have had loads of guesses of what that might be. I, I don't actually know. Some people said, is it a Swanee or Shawnee pool trailer? Which are based on counties, but they were a swan neck. Now, I don't think it would be because it's got engine mounts. Oh, sorry, under there. The nearest thing I think it looks like is someone sent me on Facebook is a Muir Hill dumper. Now, it must have been quite a big Muir Hill dumper. So, I don't know, just someone might know who built it someone did i think someone messaged me yesterday saying that they thought it had been on their farm and that may have been a number plate off a ford counter that used to tow it so maybe it was a dumper then converted by a contractor that still ran counties and that's why it's got a county number plate on but see if anyone could track down who originally built it maybe if you google uh, muir hill dumper and bring it up i'll try and find a photo the rollers on now on the fast track the roost on that how but I can't decide whether it's been on a swivel point at the pier whether it's easy to put on or it's worse to put on because it kind of jiggles around as you're doing it and I'll use the buttons on the back and it's on now but you've got to get like that square that way and that way and yeah it's just a bit wriggly sometimes just had to swap that off Joe's tractor with the fast track one because the free flow return on the new one seems to be the opposite way around whereas the fence all come with a male free flow return they seem to come with a female free flow return just emptying the remnants of the cover crop out of the drill now ready to put some wheat in the bill just drop the barley out now onto a seed top that's our feed barley dropped out of the drill Joe's now just putting some Million, sorry, malting barley in the drill. We've got two different batch numbers, so we're going to calibrate tank one to one batch number, tank two to the other batch number, and then we can flip between metering units as it starts to run out. Off it goes, bit of blue power, silver wheels, silver wheels on the drill, actually kind of matches. I wonder is that why Horse chose that colour scheme? So we can match red tractors, or tractors with red wheels, or tractors with silver wheels. So the only thing it doesn't match is the John Deere. Moving some hay and straw to the side of the road with the Merlot to run the horses. Now, this is the new side, but I think you need to drill it and put like smelly bees around here. Put, like a little solar panel on the top, maybe, so it lights up at night. Does anyone know where we get one from other than Amazon? Or a good one on Amazon? I'm in a field of oil sea rate. This was sown straight into a barley stubble. And you can see where the sort of the chaff was from the rows of straw, it's a bit thinner. And that's probably because you get this effect of the straw rotting, sort of poisons the seeds and makes them not as healthy. And you've probably got a little bit of slug pressure. But then you go to the side here, it's just a lot healthier crop. Well, I think it's doing well. The weed's starting to die as well that we sprayed off in the bottom, as well as the volunteer barley's now gone yellow. But yeah, there's just a few thinner patches. I think this is a tram line anyway, so that's not too bad. But yeah, this is dying as well, so that's pretty good. Should do all right if the pigeons don't hammer it because it's surrounded by woodland and trees. Make a nice caravan park actually here, apart from you've got a little bit of a drone for the motorway. Maybe put a bum, but you could be anywhere here. Along the headland, the mice and the birds and different things have come out and eaten the first few metres, which is sort of standard practice. I know Tommy double drills it round the edge. Tom Reese because of, because of this problem. Quiz question, some random fungus growing along the edge. A bit like a mushroom. Little mini puffballs just along this edge here next to that hazel. Quite a few of them, I thought it was potatoes at first. It's a fly tipping hot spot here, so going to put these tires across to stop people driving in and tipping but I can 
drive in with the sprayer by just straddling them tyres. So hopefully, we should stop them. Time to go and do some rolling. Got to roll this veal now. There is a few pigeons landing on it. I don't know why, because all the seeds are nicely buried because it was dissed. I don't know what they're eating, but we'll get it, get it rolled. I'll try and set a time lapse camera up in this corner, and you might be able to see it. the fast track now with the clean rollers on 12 meters wide same as the drill and hopefully I'm driving in the same place the drill drove and then it'll be the same place that the combine drives and we should just keep the traffic to a minimum on the fields these rollers used to have incredible output compared to the drill because the drill was only six meters wide whereas now the drill is 12 meters wide it's nearly a full-time job keeping up with the rollers where we need to roll. A lot of the stuff though behind that drill doesn't need rolling. But this one does because it was pre-worked. It's quite quite loose and like I want to get it nice and flat so when we put the pre-emerge and spray on it works really well because it's, it's not following all the contours. It's just flat across the top so you get a higher concentration of, of active ingredient across the top surface so it should work better. This this is the field with the row of telegraph poles in the middle. So I've lined up GPS on this, we've got an AB line now along there. It's bleeping that me now, saying I'm getting near the end of the row. That's to wake you up because you've fallen asleep. It's a bit annoying to feel this size though because it's quite, it's like a triangle, so it spends most of its time beeping at me. I've got on the joystick now that button assigned to turn the steering on and off. If you look on the screen here, you can assign different things to them buttons, so that is now the steering on and off. And the row shut up. Press that, that'll turn the steering off now. We'll turn the steering wheel and then we'll go around and then loop. And then what I'm doing is I'm going every 24 meters at the moment, so I'm gonna miss miss a row so it doesn't scuff too much when you turn tight with the rollers. Because they're so wide, you can turn that tight that it will scruff the soil up. I'll just look at the row there now. So now we're in here, hopefully, if I press that button. The steering wheel's now gone green. The tractor's now steered into the road. And um, should go in a nice straight line, leaving a 12 metre gap between the last pass of the roller and this one. So I'll go along and do every 12 metres, sorry, every 24 metres, and then I'll go loop back through and do every 12 until we finish the field. On the field over the ditch now, this is a wheat stubble. Had summer barley on the other year. The soil's in nice structure to be fair. But there's the odd place where it's a little bit, I don't know, slot closure's not ideal. You can see. It's a bit cheesy in the morning when they sew on it, so I'm just rolling it on an ever so slight angle. Anyway, it's fine now. Looks good. It's got the pigeons eating it. And get a bit of seed to soil contact so it looks alright. That was the ram that was bent like an S. Remember we straightened it in the spring. Anyway, it's really badly pitted, so I think we're going to have to replace that soon. I just keep forgetting to order one. I'll have to ring up Clay and just get a whole new ramp. I think it's easier. It kind of goes against the whole control traffic going on a slight angle, because you're obviously not driving in the multiples of where the other tram lines are. But it's, it's worth it, and it's because it's so dry anyway. We're not really doing any compaction. It's only quite a light tractor anyway, fast track. Just going to show you now what happens if you turn really short. So if you watch that roller now, it starts to go backwards. You see, and then it scuffs the soil quite a bit. It's a bit hard to see, but there's like a lump of soil there now. Yeah, we're in the road now, so flip that on. There. Yeah, if you did that every time, you end up with like all little lumps on the headland. Like I said before, Joe's and Bill have got the drill today. He's just sent me a picture, he's drilling barley at the moment. 
it's using 3.6 litres of diesel to the hectare. So that equates about 1.2 litres to the acre, which is next to nothing, isn't it? It's about, I don't know, pound, no, yeah, about pound to, oh, let me work it out. No, it's about 70 or 80 pence an acre in fuel. It's ridiculously cheap, that, isn't it? So the likes of fields that you just go straight into the stubble and direct drill, you know, you, obviously you've got the cost of the drill and a bit of wearing of it, but if you think that you're only using 70 pence worth of diesel an acre to establish a crop, it's amazing really. Got loads of little pretty stripes going up and down on a diagonal anyway. Well, it looks like Damien Brooks has had a good day for his birthday. Nice and still and dry and blue skies. What's the weather been like for every, everyone else? Is it still burning up in Canada? These two fields are done now, off to Rain Hill to ro roll some more there. I want to try and get more done before it rains tonight if I can. Just jumped off to show you this. This is some grass that I sprayed off sort of four or five days ago and we've now stitched barley into it. I'm just quickly rolling over the field here and rolling over this. Probably doesn't need it, but I'm up here. So it'll be interesting to see in a few weeks what it looks like, whether the grass dies and the barley comes up perfect and what control we've had on killing the grass as well. So we'll keep an eye on it over the winter. If you look, you can just see little lines stitched into it where we've put the barley in. It's been pushed in with the press wheel. Just done a live video over an hour. Flew by, people asking questions. Anyways, if you want to check it out, it's over there somewhere. I don't know where you find it on YouTube, you don't really know. Lots of questions. If anyone that's watching now, are they watching the live? If they are, leave a comment. Also as well, don't forget to click like to the videos because if everyone clicks like, then YouTube shows it more people and then more people get to see it. Because when I was on the live video, I asked people how they found out about the channel and a lot of them said it came up after watching somebody else. So that's all to do with how many likes the video gets. So if you're watching, click like. Anyway, that's probably about it. Oh no, it's not. It's not, but it's for today. Um, the whole fertiliser thing is getting a bit worse again because now there's a shortage of CO2, carbon dioxide. That's what you use for making drinks fizzy, using hospitals and you also use it in abattoirs as well for sealing meat and stunning livestock, I think, as well. So the whole thing now, it looks like the government's going to have to step in and make them start producing again. So it's played perfectly into their hands and now they're obviously going to be able to buy the gas better because they stopped buying it instead of we're not buying it. So the gas supplies that have dropped the prices, the government's probably now going to pay them to open. And I bet the price doesn't come down, I bet the price still keeps going up. So, perfect storm for the marketing, for the marketing people within the fertiliser industry. Anyway, that's it now. Thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe, it's up there. If you want to watch another video, it's over there somewhere. Thank you everyone that's watching. It's nice to get all the nice comments as well. And don't forget any questions, just ask in the comments below. If you're a new subscriber, welcome and tell me where you're watching from. I think there's a thing called Google Maps as well, actually, where we can start to plot where everyone can go in and log on and leave a point in a map of where they're watching from. So that'll be good if we can get that set up. I'll see you tomorrow.